Welcome everyone to your Shader Nodes training. I'm CG Matter and this is lesson 1.3 of the course. In the last lesson we talked about optimizing our workspace, so let's quickly get back to that configuration. If you forgot how to set up this layout, I recommend going back to rewatch lesson 1.2 anywhere between 100 and 200 times. Personally, I watch 1.2 as I brush my teeth because that allows me to fit two daily viewings into my schedule. Now that everyone's on the same page, we need to talk about Blender's material system. Some questions you might already have are what is a material, how do you edit a material, and what kinds of objects do we give materials to? Starting off with the first question, which again is what is a material, the most straightforward answer is that a material is just a node network. For example, in this render, we have a sphere with what looks like a gold material applied to the surface. What's really going on here is that we have a simple sphere as our base geometry, we're using the following node network to tell Blender how to shade the sphere, and finally Blender is using those instructions to output our final render. So again, this node network is what we call our material, and in this case our network is designed to make the geometry surface look golden. To get different types of materials, we just need to construct different node networks. In other words, we edit a material by altering the node network, which we can also call a node graph. As for which kinds of objects we give materials to, generally we focus on geometry, but it's also possible to assign a node graph to a light. So right now our default cube is selected, and you can see that we have a node network in our shader editor. Again, since a node network is a material, this means that the cube already has a material assigned. This is the default material that Blender creates when it loads in the startup scene. Currently, this material is just named material, but we can assign a new name to this node network. If we check out this material, you can see it's made up of this monstrosity called a principled BSDF node connected to a material output node. You don't need to understand what any of this is doing yet, but for now just interpret the BSDF as a bunch of data being sent to the output node. By changing some of the settings on the BSDF, we're sending different instructions to our material output, which then affects the surface of the cube. If we bring in another object with shift A and then assign the same material from this dropdown, you can see that one node network can be assigned to multiple objects. Instead, we can use this button to create a new material with a different name which is entirely independent of our previous material. Once we've created a bunch of materials, we have a whole list of node graphs to choose from for each object. And just like we said before, it doesn't make sense for our camera to have a material assigned, and by default our light has no material either, but we'll talk about the specifics of that later on in the course. In the next lesson, we'll go over some of the basics that will let us actually begin working with nodes, so I'll see you there in just a bit. 